I'm delighted to welcome you to our webinar today in the series of What It Takes, which is brought to you courtesy of the UCD Alumni Relations and the UCD Careers Network. We hope this webinar will give you some practical advice and insights about opportunities that are available to all UCD graduates on our master's program in Smurfit and the value that a master's can bring to you for your CV um, in the employment market. We have a fantastic lineup today, which includes our alumni, employers, and of course, my colleagues. I'd like now to introduce Director of the UCD Smurford Graduate School, Professor Gerald R. Dean Doyle. Thank you, Elaine, and good afternoon, everyone. You are all very welcome. We are delighted that you are considering a business master's qualification with us at the UCD Smurford School. We are situated in Dublin, which is home to the European headquarters of many of the world's leading companies, including financial services, medtech, pharma and biopharma, and of course, global technology companies. In fact, besides the cultural capital, Dublin is also known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. Many of our alumni are leaders in the European headquarters of these global corporations, and indeed many of the world's not-for-profit organisations. Our alumni create employment opportunities for our graduates in some of the world's top companies. We are proud to be Ireland's leading business school and are recognised globally for preparing the next generation of business leaders. An important part of the student experience at UCD Smurfit School is that even before you arrive on campus, you are encouraged to engage immediately with our careers team, who will help you to plan and prepare for employment on graduation. Indeed, in April of this year, we had 13 professionals from LinkedIn who joined an online session to help more than 100 of our students on a one-to-one -one basis to enhance their LinkedIn profile. Our careers team will discuss your career ambitions and options with you and shortly you will meet Michael um, who's one of our team and a careers manager. In fact, data from 2018 graduate outcome survey for the College of Business tells us that 96% of our 2018 graduates were in employment within six months. Our unique programmes and student experience ensure that we develop your skill set to enable you to be successful and impactful leaders at each level of your career. We develop the skills and attributes that employers want, such as critical thinking, ethical reasoning, appreciation of different cultures, and also developing a sense of civic responsibility. So Sean, I'll introduce you to shortly, is a recruitment manager from Bearing Point and is one of our alumni on our panel here uh, this afternoon. And he will speak further um, on the attributes that employers desire. Um, so you might well ask, how do we develop your skill set um, to be impactful leaders? First, we do this through individualised learning. So not only will we provide you with the best academic teaching, with faculty engaged in cutting edge research, we do so in small intimate sized classes and ensure that you have access to the type of learning you will need to develop and grow as leaders. One way we do this is through our unique global leadership program. And this is a co-curricular skills program that aims to help you develop your leadership capabilities in preparation for entering the workplace. We offer modules in leadership, workplace skills, intercultural competence and career planning in a structured framework where you self-identify the activities you feel that you would benefit from the most. This is unique to the UCD Smurfit School and we believe that it is a key tool in being prepared to enter the global workplace. We have a Global Leadership Programme information webinar, which is planned for the 20th of August, and we'll be posting a link to this event during this session, should you wish to attend. So second, through strategic partnerships, we also maintain high quality strategic partnerships, which enhance your student experience. So for example, we are a founding member of GNAM, which is an alliance of leading international business schools, and our networks uh, such as SEMS and PIM. Most recently, for example, we have formed a new one plus one collaboration with Fordham University in New York. This enables our students to study in New York and Fordham University students likewise to study at the UCD Smurfit School, obtaining an award from both universities. Third, through diversity. 
Through a rich suite of 21 specialist master's programmes, you will find that studying business at master's level opens many doors of employment opportunity, both within and beyond your specialism. So for example, graduates of our master's in digital innovation have roles in companies varying from Vodafone to Salesforce, Google to General Motors. And our master's in human resource management which attracts students from many different backgrounds, such as liberal arts and social science, has graduates that are in demand across many sectors, from health to finance. So today we have three alumni with us to share their experiences. Uh, Rebecca, who studied law and then studied the MSc in marketing practice at the Smurfett School, and she is now a senior brand manager with Boyne Valley Group. We also have Sinead who studied pharmacy and then studied our MBA program at the Smurfett School and is now involved in the business of pharmacy, working in Vista Healthcare. And we also have Sean Fitzgerald, who's a recruitment manager at Bearing Point and an alumnus of our UCD Smurfett Executive Development. Another illustrative example um, is in fact my own background. I am a science graduate of UCD, majoring in pharmacology. I then studied business with KPMG and trained as a chartered accountant and chartered tax advisor. From this lived experience and that of 80% of our graduates, there are three key lessons that we've learned. Number one, it takes courage to take on a new or specialist discipline, such as marketing, management or human resource management. However, it is very rewarding. Why? Because so many more employment opportunities will be available to you. Second, bringing two disciplines together, like science and business, creates innovation and creativity, where you understand your core discipline of science, and then you understand the business of science. In my case, as a pharmacologist, the business of pharma. And thirdly, employers appreciate this courage to go beyond your core discipline. For them, such employees are more broad-minded, lateral, creative thinkers who can think outside of the box, bringing innovation to their business. We take great pride in the diverse and global nature of our student body at the UCD Smurfett School, and I know that many of you have tuned in today from countries all over the world. You all have different experiences and backgrounds, and we would like to stress that you are all welcome. Experience has taught us that not only can we create great business leaders, but that you come from many specialisms and backgrounds. This diversity in our classrooms adds to the richness of your experience, as you learn not only from us as faculty, but also from your peers. In fact, one of the most exciting things that drives the depths of talent that we see at the school is that over 80% of our master's programmes are suitable for both business and non-business undergraduates. So for example, many mathematics graduates study MSc in finance. Arts and humanities graduates often study our MSc in human resource management or marketing, digital marketing and retail innovation. Scientists, engineers, nursing and veterinary graduates often study our MSc in management. And finally, I shall say a few words about our reputation. We know that you have already done a lot of research about who we are, and you will already know that the UCD Smurfett School is the only Irish business school to have the triple accreditation of AMBA, AACSB, and also ECRIS, which is our distinctive quality assurance mark. It guarantees the quality of your education and student experience at the UCD Smurfett School. And we continue to be ranked amongst the best business schools in the world by the Financial Times and The Economist. External accreditation is an important measure of the high standards we demand and are also recognised around the globe by your potential employers. It also means that you are joining the most supportive teaching and learning environment, both while you are here and into the future through our careers network team. In summary, it is not just our attention to the highest academic rigour in teaching that makes UCD Smurfett School unique, but also how we prepare you for the world of employment. We do hope that you will join us in September and we look forward to meeting you in person. And it is now my great pleasure to hand you over to my colleague, Michael MacDonald, our careers manager and our alumnus, Sean Fitzgerald. Over to you, Michael. Thank you, Geraldine. I hope you can all hear me here this afternoon. And I'd like to welcome you all uh, to this short conversation I'm going to have with our employer partner, uh, 
Sean Fitzgerald, who's been about 12 years at Bearing Point and obviously is working with Smurfit Business School because of our reputation. Wouldn't that be right, Sean? And it's obviously because you've come to study with us as well. So on both, on both uh, agendas, uh, you've done well. So thank you, Sean, for coming along today. I don't know, Michael, thanks for having me. No problem. So in terms of uh, what we're going to discuss and how this is going to, this, this short conversation, we're going to probably look at the market for the, for, at the outset and perhaps then just look at the benefits a master's, particularly from Smurfit, and what we can do for our potential students. Is that, would that be fair enough, Sean? Are we happy to go with that? Good to me, Michael. Good. So uh, one of the, another partner we work with would be Morgan McKinley, and it's a recruitment agency here in Dublin and around Ireland, in Cork, so it's well represented. They have provided a report in the month of June. And of course, the, the current situation is, is very trying, of course, for Irish businesses, with probably uh, most companies hit, getting a hit of maybe 20% plus in revenue. I think that is one key thing to take into consideration and how students can position themselves best uh, for this comeback. I think that's probably where our conversation will go. Uh, in relation then to uh, trends that you are seeing in your sector with Bearing Point, uh, Sean, would you like to tell us a few things there? Sure, Michael. The, the Morgan McKinley report, it, it does it provides an interesting overview of where the market is currently at and some good insight into how businesses in Ireland will fare post-COVID-19. As you'd expect, the trends highlighted in the report, such as working remotely, increased use of video interviewing and conferencing, virtual onboarding of remote employees, these are all trends that bearing point ourselves have experienced as an organization over the past few months. From a client perspective, I guess there are three key trends that bearing point is seeing in the sectors we work in. Uh, one of those would be in relation to companies and their internal organization structures. Uh, another would be the emergence of different skill sets. And finally, then workforce flexibility. In relation to the first trend, companies are certainly taking this opportunity to review their internal org structures to enable them to adapt and respond to the changing environment in which we all now find ourselves in. The original front of house, shop front model is gone. Uh, restrictions are lifting, customers are coming back. So companies are reviewing their models to ensure that they're fit for purpose. And we're going to see teams needing to be able to perform multiple roles, which I guess in turn is leading to the emergence of different skill sets. For example, the increasing role that digital is playing is very evident with a focus on process automation, to reduce any unnecessary administrative burden with an emphasis on providing more value added to customers, which is important. And digital first operating environments, they require different skills. So we're going to see organizational roles merged or even changed. Uh, this is likely to result in reduced demand levels in some existing teams while increasing the need for other services. So the skills required in the digital workplace, I mean, they're different to those typical in more paper-driven operations. Mm -hmm. Not only will the business processes change, but individual roles and responsibilities will be different. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a key objective for companies will be to identify any gaps in knowledge and skills mm -hmm. and facilitate the development of the competencies required to empower their people and to set them up for success going forward. In particular, uh, any gaps in managerial effectiveness will need to be identified and addressed to ensure a smooth transition to the new ways of working. Uh, and another consideration will be the wider cultural changes that will be required within organizations to align to the digital workplace. This includes adopting new behaviors and mindset in addition to the development of hard and soft skills. How we communicate will change. As it's always been important, soft skills training, but we're certainly seeing an, inc an increased emphasis on, on this uh, area. Um, resilience training, problem solving, the ability to respond to change, creativity and innovation. Mm -hmm. 
And then finally, Michael, I guess, workforce flexibility. You know, not surprisingly, you know, we're seeing a move toward remote working and increased demand for co-working space, video conferencing and interviewing, as I mentioned, uh, and getting people back to work and all the various challenges and opportunities associated with this. Very good. And I guess you've, you've kind of echoed a lot there in terms of the experience of our students of late uh, when the university had to go online. Uh, a lot of those remote working skills are really key at the moment. I think it's a key, an unexpected key skill set that has uh, developed. And particularly when we talk to students around developing camp competencies, uh, digital competencies are key at the moment. And definitely digital skills are high on the agenda in what a lot of organizations are looking at in their potential recruits at this point in time. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good that your message is aligned to a lot of other employers uh, that we're talking to and the message is, is clear. So uh, in terms then of obviously upskilling uh, in this particular environment that we're in at the moment, uh, the opportunity to complete a master's and of course complete a master's at the, the most uh, highly ranked institution in Ireland, the Smurfit Business School, uh, what, what are you looking for in master students? Because I know you come on campus regularly, uh, thankfully, uh, as, a, as, a, as a, you know, a good partner, a good friend to Smurfit. Uh, you come on campus regularly and you hold interviews, mock interviews particularly. So what, what is it that you're seeing and what is it you're looking for in a master student? And why do you bother coming to us, basically? Sure, good question. I mean, firstly, by way of context, Michael, for anyone not familiar with Bearing Point, we are a leading management and technology consulting firm. That's what we do. So aligned to this, we actively seek out postgrads with a keen interest in technology innovation and how it can be used to transform business and customer engagement models. Most employers or jobs will require you to undertake some form of training in order to progress along your career path. However, by supplementing your undergraduate degree with a master's qualification, you're setting yourself apart from the competition. Advantages to an employer of hiring a postgrad versus an undergrad. Specialized knowledge, a specialist master's program provides the opportunity to focus your learning and career path on a dedicated area, regardless of whether you're a business or a non-business uh, graduate in subject areas, including uh, accounting, banking and finance, human resources, management, marketing, MIS. The benefits of a master's degree can help you build on the platform gained during your undergraduate studies to develop a spike in a particular area, uh, gain new skills, or even transition to an entirely new field. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it helps to facilitate. Sorry. The transition piece is quite common. It is, and becoming more, more and more common, uh, uh, Michael. And ultimately, it helps to facilitate career advancement you know, in your chosen area and shows you're dedicated to enhancing your industry expertise and your, and your credibility. It also demonstrates a commitment to lifelong learning. Uh, the benefits of a master's degree to improve your researching, your writing, and your analytical skills. As a result, you become a better problem solver. You can tackle more easily complex projects and continue to expand on the wealth of knowledge gained during your undergrad and this all helps to set you up for a life of constant learning which of course is a very positive thing and finally enhanced professional network as a master's graduate many of your fellow peers will go on to work in a wide variety of industries and backgrounds and act as a very useful network of contacts over the course of your career you'll study with professors who are industry leaders providing real world knowledge with valuable networks of their own. And of course, you open yourself up to a host of exclusive UCD Smurfit alumni benefits also, Michael. Yes, I mean, the, the network is key and we find that um, year on year, many of the experienced hire people, or people perhaps who have a couple of years of experience under their belt, uh, will find their next role through the networks. So it's uh, an opportunity to you know, position yourself very well within the Smurfit network and, and reaching out to the alumni and building those networks would be a key message we would always start out with at the start of the year with the Smurfit uh, students. Um, so it just, I suppose then if we move on for a moment, and uh, so if, if we drill down a little bit further, so 
As um, Geraldine pointed out at the start, you know, about 96% of the latest data we have on placement after the master's, 96% uh, of Smurfit graduates are in employment after six months. So obviously there's, there's, a, there's partly a reason for that. And, you know, apart from academic success, you know, um, for, for graduates in particular, uh, academic success is probably ability focused and that's primary, of course, but that only gets you into a process perhaps, and maybe gets you shortlisted. But what are then, you know, what are the activities or what, are, what actionable things should the Smurfit students then be doing throughout the year to get themselves a uh, job market ready? You know, what, is, what, what things can they be doing as well as the academics? Because we know, uh, you know, senior managers in particular, or even CEOs, when they look at somebody, they actually don't look at the first bit and they go down to the interesting bits. You know, what are the interesting bits this guy has been up to or girl? So what, what would you suggest? Sean. So num number one for me here, Michael, is begin with the end in mind. So before you start to write your CV, have a very clear job target in mind. Right. If it changes, then no problem. At least you develop a job search strategy and all you need to do is change the focus or the role. Second for me here yes. would be, Good sure, thing. Michael, yeah. Just, just uh, you know, that's, that's kind of something that a lot of students underestimate, uh, that even if they just pick a target, the understanding and the skill that they've acquired by aiming at that target, then you can move to different targets. So thank you, Sean. That's a, that's a great one to start with. No, no, no problem. Thanks, Michael. Uh, number two for me is in relation to branding. Brand yourself for excellence versus average, mm -hmm. because I guess ultimately, if you don't fall into one category, you fall into the other. Your, your CV is a marketing tool. So you need to focus on your achievements. Use it to demonstrate your value to your target audience. And this applies to all career tools. So write it in a way that highlights the unique selling points that make you stand out from others. Find those stories that show your strengths and areas where you excel. And don't be afraid to have some extracurricular stories also, plus examples of you giving back which I think is important. And remember, employers don't expect you to know everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, you must demonstrate that you have enough breadth and exposure to be successful in the role. But at the end of the day, you're being hired into a graduate position. So you're being hired for your potential, what you can become, what you can grow into, while at the same time demonstrating that you have the self-awareness to know your development areas as well as your strengths, which I think a master's really helps with. Yes. And the the, the, the self-awareness piece there is something I think that Smurfit students in particular are acknowledged for. The master's graduates, we get sure. feedback from employers year in, year out, and say, well, you know what? They're a different animal uh, after a master's. Uh, they've become so much more aware of where their strengths are, uh, what they need to probably some of their gaps. But I think it's the strengths-focused approach and that mindset. I mean, I'm really struck by the, the uh, challenge you're putting to our potential Smurfit students here today. It's develop your mindset. You know, it's brand yourself for excellence uh, versus the average. And which book are you in? That's, uh, that's, a, that's a big challenge there, Sean. It is. It is, it is Michael. You know, but again, it, it is it, a lot, so much of it comes back to your brand. This is your personal brand. and how you manage it. And I guess aligned to that then, I guess it would be to tailor your content. Sending out generic CVs is unlikely to yield a positive outcome. So customize every application. It's all about tailoring to the hiring need. So if you place yourself in the shoes of a hiring manager who has 500 applications to review, what is it about your application that's going to make it stand out? So you need to be succinct into front load statements and bullet points. Don't make the reader hunt for information. This is your story, your journey. So ensure that you have a CV that truly represents you and the story that you have to tell. Very good. And that kind of starts the journey on for the Smurfit student in terms of their career development program. We, we start looking at that story and the, the message we get from alumni as well in recent years is that definitely you're, you're you have to stand out and you know it's it's about telling sorry in the first instance it's about writing that story right so we've we've got a quite a number of tools we in programs we put our students through 
in, in, in order to distill what's the most important aspects they have and they're fit for a particular role. As you say, to target that role from the, from the outset, get, it's good practice. If the, if the target changes, well then that's, the skill has been acquired, so that's the important thing. And the next step we, we see, and a lot of employers would uh, you know, give us this feedback. So it's, it's not just enough to write your story, you need to be able to tell your story as well. What I mean by that is, uh, you know, in, in the interview, which is the face-to-face -face piece, or uh, when you're in and maybe in a networking situation, it's, it's how you move from the written word to then the speaking part. Um, just a, kind of a final question to you. So, you, as I said to you already, as I've mentioned, you've come out and you've done, did you do some mock interviews? I think you've done mock interviews with us, have you? Uh, we have, we have. Yeah. So, what, you know, what, what would you say then, you know, in terms of preparing for interview, what would be the best approach to take? Uh, well, certainly uh, following on from the, <laughs> your, your last question, know your CV. Mm -hmm. Again, know your story inside out, upside down and back to front. It's uh, a... No, 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 no lies. I mean, I'm... I guess we're living in the world of LinkedIn as well, Michael. So the, anyone, it can be argued, can go and write a good CV, but you need to be able to go in and back it up with interview. You know, uh, back to, I mean, preparation, preparation, preparation. Uh, I think have, have, have good examples, have good quality examples ready to back up your story. You know, and again, you have the STAR method, you know, I think most people are familiar with, use it. It's a really good tool. Um, and yeah, I, I think that, 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 that's really it. I mean, ex 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 good quality examples. And then of course, Michael, at the end, you, you do reach a stage in, in, whereby you're almost judged as much on your level of questioning as you are on your level of answering. So have some really good, insightful, quality questions to ask not questions whereby you know the answers are all available on the website or is you know so it's yeah. a, a, about active listening yes yes of course and i guess the another another i suppose outcome from these the feedback we get from employers and you're kind of there about practicing these stories so the star method etc it's it's a skill it's it's an, and we have would you know be very conscious as part of our careers development program for our students is that you know being able to tell your story is so important because uh, you only really have one shot at it, and that's in the interview. Uh, and that's where you need to, to bring it over the line. And I suppose, going back to probably the outset of the, the question, it's about, well, what experiences can you have in Smurfit over this next year that's going to set you apart? So I suppose what the, the challenge to the student is, not just look for the academic story or the team story within the academic context, but get involved in the extracurricular uh, you know, my colleagues, Ger has already referenced the GLP, the Global Leadership Program. Uh, there's all lots of other, there's their class ambassador programs. Um, there is other events that happen in the main university, you know, not just in Smurfit, you're very welcome to go there. So it's, it's finding that uh, extra that's going to set you apart. So Sean, uh, thank you very much for answering my questions today. Hopefully I didn't grill you too much there. Uh, I'll invite you to stay on if you don't mind. Uh, we'll probably have a Q and A at the end of this, and I'm going to now ask uh, my colleague Elaine to come back and to bring us on to the next element of our t of our webinar today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, thanks, Sean. So it's I think the big takeaway there is brand yourself for excellence, not average. I think that was my big takeaway out of that, which is nice, a nice kind of uh, one one thing to focus on. So thank you both. Thank you. We'll see you at the Q and A then. Thank you. So now I'd like to invite uh, Sinead Ryan and Rebecca Fitzgerald. Um, my colleague Jur had mentioned both of them with, uh, in, in her introduction. So welcome Sinead, welcome Rebecca. Um, Sinead, you completed your MBA last year, uh, 2019, your executive MBA. Um, and Rebecca completed her MSc in digital marketing practice in 2014. So you're both very welcome. So Sinead, I'll go to you first. Um, you're a qualified pharmacist. Um, um, and then you go on and you do the executive MBA. 
tell us why. Why would you? Why did you do that? I think even even back to secondary school, I always had a love of science and business, and and that kind of continued on. Um, and I felt I was I was at a um, at a point in my career um, that I was technically very good, but I just felt that I really wanted to expand my skill set in management and marketing. Um, and I, I, I just thought the MBA would was the perfect kind of marriage between the two and um, and just kind of developing um, further on um, towards that as well. Um, I found it very, very beneficial. Um, just prior to that, I had spoke to a number of um, alumni and um, just um, just the benefits that they got from the MBA. Um, that I, I found it, um, that, that that was something that um, I, I wanted to, to go and I was very interested in as well. With so what value do you think it gave you career opportunity wise, you know? Um, so th throughout it, um, I was working at the same time and, and there was various um, um, opportunities that came um, from it, actually even directly from, from the network mm -hmm. of, of the MBA, uh, which again, it wasn't something I was um, that I was expecting going into it. Um, so again, I've um, consulted with multinational drug companies. Um, I, I um, um, got on positions of various boards and, and committees within um, healthcare. I mm -hmm. also took on a management role and leadership role um, just after the MBA as well. So I felt all the skills that I'd built up throughout the MBA were invaluable um, 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 to my to my career. Also, um, um, we got a lot of opportunities within the MBA. Um, I got to go to Yale University studying management. Um, I also got to go to Oxford University um, uh, for leadership as well. Um, and they were really just, I think, broadening and, and um, actually even the development of the network there that um, it afforded me international opportunities for consulting um, within drug companies. So um, that was hugely beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, and again, something at the, at the starting point I didn't realise. Yeah, um, yeah. uh, so it was a really a, a good unexpected benefit. Um, so also, the network with both your network, your class network that's Murphy's, but also yeah. obviously the international network as well, obviously. Well, yeah. International uh, network as well that, that we're actually still in touch with, um, uh, So which, which is incredible. So um, that was really good. But also um, we, um, I suppose, just looking at pharmacy and healthcare, I was really passionate and, um, um, about those and, and I always wanted to stay within healthcare. Um, we went to an Iceland trip and um, oh. we, we did consultancy um, that was kind of at the midpoint of first year. And that was really, really beneficial because it was the first time you really could see how collaboration within healthcare um, really added um, benefit. Um, so um, I worked on an e-health project and a global distribution um, uh, um, of drugs project in, in Iceland. And further for the capstone, um, I worked with an e-health um, company that's based in Ireland as well. So it's really um, actually something that you, you can actually individualize your MBA and really focus in on mm. maybe the future of your industry as well. So um, it was it was hugely beneficial, yeah. Well, particularly the, um, I mean, the MBA offers so much fantastic trips abroad, you know, as a, as a group, you know. And um, Japan and ageing, I also did yeah. um, a, a programme on ageing in Japan um, with Japanese. So again, it's looking at kind of an international perspective and, and it is an issue that, that, that um, Ireland is, is going to experience in the coming years as well. So yeah. I really think it gave you insight into kind of um, healthcare policy and healthcare strategy as well. Um, also, I felt um, that the um, kind of, really had industry leading um, lecturers um, as well within um, the MBA. In particular, I felt um, negotiation uh, with Stephen Boyle was fantastic. It was, it, it's really Everybody good. says, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a must do. Mm. Um, really, really good for, uh, for the soft skills, but also I think it's something that, that you, um, fr from a day-to-day, -day, even in day-to-day in, um, -day work and, and in your career that um, I, I've constantly found that I've um, got benefit from. Um, also the strategy modules as well were hugely beneficial. And then for the boards and, and, and committee work. And yeah, that would be, yeah, yeah. Eve Brennan was also. Um, oh yeah, uh, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, Geraldine talked about courage, and I suppose that's the thing that often people say to me is, you know, it's you can sense that fear, you know, taking that step. Um, so did you feel that? And how did you how did you kind of overcome that? Absolutely. And I think because I came from a very science um, background and I was um, all my all my subjects up to that point were always science based. Um, I did feel oh, would I be able for the accounting mm -hmm. and you hear corporate finance, you hear all these um, um, 
and you're kind of going, am I able for it? But actually, I mean, the support that you got from the class and from, from your class, but also from tutorials and from the lectures, you actually know all your lectures as well because it's such a small individual yeah, class. Great. So you actually get all this extra help in tutorials. So you actually sometimes even do, end up doing better on those those modules uh, because you, you, you put so much um, work into them. But everyone um, gets through together as well. And, you know, everyone that started our year actually all finished as well, um, that everyone really um, had that kind of shared. Yeah, people support each other hugely, don't they? They really do. I mean, from the class, there seems to be that huge. Um, so your one takeaway is what then? today and, and i think just even talking to people and and even myself i think you might be thinking about an mba for a year or two before you actually go and do it you know but i, I do think it's something that will stay with you that i, I think just do it you know and mm. and i think um even um i like there, there is that i suppose you are working um within the class of some hugely experienced industry leaders and they're working for this but you gain so much from um being in the class with them from doing projects with them and it's just something to kind of really embrace and and then kind of um you know you i think you grow with them um th throughout the throughout the two years so i, I would just kind of if, if it's in your head to do it just just go for it you yeah you would apply and go yeah so i bring rebecca in now so rebecca uh you did your um law uh, degree in sutherland um and then you went on to do the well you worked a couple of years uh, as a lawyer um and then you went and did the masters in uh, marketing practice so why so tell us why why that move well I wasn't a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> were, I yeah. did the degree and went over to the states and worked for a year over there and I mean laid so quickly I knew that just it was so not for me okay. and uh, I came back and I'd been working over in Chicago Chicago is amazing law not for me and uh, I'd come back and I knew I wanted to get into the business world and it's so funny listening to Sinead and even Sean earlier like I had such a fear of making the transition over. Um, I think the, the term imposter syndrome was definitely something that I struggled with and thinking, oh my God, I'm going to go into this class with people who've come from commerce. And I'm going to be found out. I'm going to be an idiot. Um, and sometimes I was. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you still uh, came out with a first class honours, if yeah, I'm right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, I went into what well, it's sometimes called marketing practice. Other times the MDP, the Marketing mm -hmm. Development Programme and absolutely from start to finish adored it and um, you just get totally stuck in from the start and um, yeah it's it, you learn by doing and for me coming from an undergrad into of law and then working in a law firm I had no idea how it was going to be and how much I was going to dislike it so actually going into a master's that you learn by doing you know from the get-go this is my strength and, and again something that Sean and Michael spoke about when you talk about your self-awareness very quickly you get to know yourself so well and what you enjoy doing knowing you're going to have this big long career uh, you want to pick something that you enjoy doing and that's what I suppose the MDP gave to me a really early insight into where my strengths were uh, and what I wanted to do with myself and uh, I suppose people will ask you know now you know, should I wait or like, should I go and get work experience and then do a master's? Or I suppose, I mean, obviously one of the current questions is should I wait till the pandemic is over? You know, are people just, you know, are, what would you, what would you say to that? Yeah, I think again, it's, I suppose, everyone's own individual decision and it totally depends on their circumstances. But for me, I was probably one of the older ones in, in the master's at the time. It tends to be people who've come um, straight out of their undergrad and have gone into it. There was a mix, I suppose. Um, so there's, pros and cons to both um personally i would think just get straight in get stuck into it and um the year fly flies by anyway because you're just involved in so many different things um so for me the benefit of having i suppose that one year of uh, of working in that law firm i knew very quickly what i didn't like so i was very focused and um, versus someone coming straight in from undergrad there's loads of benefits from that too and um, you know they're they're coming in at uh, I suppose they're still fresh in that that um, almost study mind frame. They're mm. able to just make that transition really quickly. Uh, whereas I was going from making money to then being back as a student. Mm. So totally depends. Um, but uh, either way, whatever way you go with it, um, there's such a diverse group within that course as is. It doesn't matter if you're young, old, uh, from Ireland, abroad. 
um, I think they, the diversity is what makes it so strong. Oh, yeah. And you went on to Kerry Group, um, yes. uh, I know, yeah, and then, which was obviously a fantastic experience. I mean, their whole research in food is fantastic. Um, mm. And I know now you work with uh, Boyne Valley Foods, um, so, uh, and which you're doing some really exciting stuff you're telling us earlier on. Yes. Uh, so, um, I suppose the question I had then is that when you when you uh, were in Smurfit, then did you did you find that having Smurfit on your CV helped? I mean, it's a no-brainer. So Smurfit, I mean, you just have a, a number of different connections from just being in. And again, it was similar to what Sinead said about almost your support system you have with your peers, but your your professors, your um, we had a, I suppose a marketing director is what is what Orda was called, but. Um, what actually ended up happening, I got my job in Kerry Group through my marketing director at the time. So Orla Garrity was our marketing director and moved to Kerry and referred me. But mm -hmm. throughout the whole course of the year, I mean, because again, you're, it's, a, it's a practical master's, you're being introduced to so many different um, kind of companies because you're doing mm -hmm. projects for them. So I had a number of opportunities from the course to, I suppose, um, build on and to Kerry Group for me was a no-brainer. I, mm -hmm. I was absolutely obsessed with the idea of working with a big international company and, and the experience that it would give me. But even in terms of a CV, and I suppose to bring it back to what Sean said about your own personal branding, um, having a law degree and then having Smurfit on top of it, um, having that different background and I suppose a, a, an array of different skills is something that's always been attractive to, uh, to anyone that has interviewed mm -hmm. me. And Smurfit straight away you're viewed as credible um, and I suppose that you have a good work ethic because it is, there's no denying it, if you want to do well you have to work hard and most people will know that when they're reviewing your CV that you've, you've gone into a program that uh, you have to work yeah. hard and that MDP you have the right work ethic. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. the MDPs are hard, it, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a tough enough course, a bit like the MBA, it's similar to the MBA, so. And did you get, Rebecca, to know people in other courses in the campus? Cause, yeah. You know, I mean, um, I mean, for the international students who wouldn't know, I mean, it's a, it's a separate campus to our main university campus, a beautiful, beautiful campus. But mm. did you get to know many in the other um, MSc programmes? Yeah, and that would be one piece of advice, I suppose, I would give to, to anyone thinking of going in. And uh, you can get involved in so many different things in Smurfit. Um, one good example I have is we decided that we wanted to do like, um, I suppose, a, um, a charity kind of Dancing with the Stars type event. And... Um, we got all the different students from all the different courses involved in it and had a massive turnout, raised about 25K doing it. And it was the best fun ever. Mm -hmm. But it just meant you were mixing with all these different types of people and things like that. That's just one example. There was tons of different opportunities to meet new people. And uh, I think everyone's so welcoming. You know, mm -hmm. pretty much everyone there, it doesn't matter if they've come from a business background, if they've been working, not working, the entire environment in Smurfit is so welcoming, so supportive that, um, you know, you feel like you can actually be proactive with ideas. If you do want to start different initiatives, if you do want to meet new people, there's groups to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely say for anyone from an international perspective, if, they, if there's any form of fear of, you know, going to a new country potentially and starting a new college, you make friends really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and Or if you're a loner and you don't want to make friends, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's definitely loads of opportunity to, to make new friends and to, to grow your international network as well. Yeah, and I suppose, as Michael said, I mean, all of those extracurriculum activities look really well on your CV, and I, yeah. I you know, and at Murphy, we would encourage people to do that. And as, and I, I mean, it's in the MBA as well, Sinead, there'd be quite a lot of that goes on as well, you know, from the point of view of extracurriculum. Absolutely, and and I think even there's so opportunity, there's opportunities even like. Um, start something you're really interested in. Um, so myself and um, another um, um, person in my class, uh, Dr. Knumo, um, along with um, Professor Geraldine Doyle, um, set up a healthcare network. Mm -hmm. um, so again, this was even post MBA, um, again, because we just saw the value of collaboration and we saw within our own class, just uh, like how valuable it is that all different, um, between uh, pharmaceutical industry, the professions, even IT, um, and just, how all of that together, the collaboration leads to innovation and, and healthcare solutions um, as well. So um, there's, there's such an opportunity to 
you know, grow new new things and just explore new aspects as well. Um, but there's so much um, um, between the um, the golf society um, I was involved with. Um, also, there's a lot of um, opportunities for careers as well. So I went to all of the career talks and I think it, it is something that, that, that a few people have said, but you actually are much more aware of where your strength lies. And also, um, for example, areas that you might need to improve, but also, and, and I think, from a management point of view that it's it's critical that you do know where your strengths are and and just managing teams as well your self-awareness and 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 really how to to optimize uh, team performance as well and, and that was something that I really feel I improved over the two years as well so um it, it's, it's definitely a tailor a tailored um kind of course and it's so hands-on as well um and it, it, you really do come out of it much more well-rounded I, I I feel as well Mm. And of course, with the MBA, you have a global network, which is fantastic. You know, you get that, you know, you get that, as you said, Yale and Oxford, you get that, you know, and you get those connections. Because I know you said to me recently you were on a webinar with, you know, um, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and a number of them visited Dublin and yeah, yeah, and which is Cape um, Town before before the the, the uh, coronavirus. And I, I also think actually, um, what what I've really noticed about the benefits of the MBA is just since March that, you know, a, a lot of our industries have been affected. So, for example, pharmacy is, is potentially down by thirty eight to forty percent. Um, but again, it's having the skill set to kind of pivot and evolve within within and and in a very agile way as well so I, I think it is about having that skill set on hand as well um you know in in times of crisis as well so I, th I think that really does build your resilience as well so that's great and um, Rebecca what's your one takeaway then for all those listening today feel the fear and do it anyway mm -hmm. and I think it's that same approach um even once you get into the masters just go for it um and, and you won't regret it you'll make mistakes along the way but that's what it's all about. It's about learning and, and just getting, I suppose, better and better. You step step out of your comfort zone and you know feel the feel the fear, as you said. And Sinead, yours. I would say again, immerse yourself in it, do it. And I would also say maybe there is no right time as well. You know, a lot of people built houses, got married, had kids, so it was NBA babies and everything happening. And it, you know, over the two years, I think just do it, just kind of embrace it. And everyone helps you and the support you get that um, it is just, um, it is something that you can work work through as well. And so. of course, as well with SmartFit, I mean, we're always happy to talk to somebody. So even before you want to put your application in, if you know, you give us a ring and we're happy to, um, or, you know, equally, you know, email us and we're happy to give you a call because sometimes it's just, as you say, somebody to sort of say, yeah, look, talk to, I know Sinead, I asked you to link in with three or four people who are considering doing the MBA last week and Rebecca's done the same with uh, for somebody who's looking at doing marketing, um, who had a, I, I did you know, have, yeah. Before Pardon? the MBA, I, I spoke to three or four people yeah. myself and it just, it really does help. Yeah, It does help, you know, because the sort of questions that you feel, well, you can ask people. So, so thank you both. And uh, so the takeaway really is just do it. Just make the application or make the call and uh, or talk to an alumni. And um, so, um, so I'll ask my colleague Carol now to come on in because Carol has been watching the Q&A. So hi, Carol, how are you? Carol heads up our China and Asia region. Uh, so, um, Carol, any questions that the panelists would like? Uh, we could ask in uh, Geraldine and Sean and Michael also. Oh, Elaine, we have been very busy working. <laughs> Good to hear. And we have received excellent, uh, very interesting questions. So I've grouped them in teams. Now, obviously, we won't be able to cover them all. So the first question is for Sean. And we have seen a recurring um, theme around COVID-19. Are there reduced job opportunities post COVID-19? And what can you do to increase your employability skills? And how can you benchmark yourself? What are your thoughts on that, Sean? Yeah, it's a fair question. I mean, for me, Carol, Yes, absolutely. It's affected the amount of job opportunities out in the market. There's a lot of sectors and industries uh, that have been badly affected or impacted. I guess from a bearing point perspective, we're uh, very fortunate that the company is in as good a position as we could possibly hope for it to be in uh, at this current moment in time. So, I mean, I guess that probably extends to a lot of uh, opportunities within the tech sector, maybe generally speaking, but uh, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely, you know, the, the employ unemployment stats uh, testify to that. 
So it's a great opportunity, Sean, for the participants to, um, you know, reskill, for, for retraining, for looking at different markets, different job opportunities in different sectors. What are your thoughts? It's absolutely, Carol. And it's, it's a question that graduates can expect to face at interview. And again, as we spoke about earlier, it's all down to preparation. And you want to make sure that when you do secure that opportunity of an interview for your dream role, that you're able to give it your best shot and, and, and walk out with your head held high. And the question, what did you do during your COVID downtime? You know, or during that period, how did you utilize your time? How did you spend it? You know, and I, mean, I, I think if you, if you answer it by saying you went back to do a master's in Smurfit, you further develop your, as a, your, your education, your skills, your knowledge base. It's a, I mean, it, it's a year well spent. You know? Yeah. And in terms of marketing yourself, in, you know, in relation to product, price, place, and promotion. So I think tools that we offer in the Smurfit School of Business. Michael has addressed a lot of the promotional tools and what you can do um, would be very beneficial. Sorry, that for me, Carol, I lost you there, Carol. Oh, yes, sorry, Sean. So, sorry. Or, Sean or Michael. So in terms of benchmarking uh, yourself, um, what I, I assume like promotional tools would be very advantageous. Advantageous, Michael. What is your thought? So benchmarking myself against the competition in terms of getting jobs, I think that might be the perspective the question is coming from. At least that's what I'm going to take it as. Okay, yeah, uh, you're right. So job description. Number one, mm -hmm. find out what your skill uh, gaps are and what your strengths are for a role. Number two, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's in the job already? What are other people doing in the same job in different companies? And number three, talk to people. You have to talk to the, um, the organizations that you want to work in, find out what they need, and you build yourself towards that need. I assume it's extremely important then to tailor your CV to different job specs. Never use the same CV or cover letter for one, for one job or for all your jobs. Yes, we will be drilling that into people from day one. Don't worry. Absolutely. I think, Carol, just, just, just one other point on that. I mean, it, ability, skills, and motivation. I mean, you want to be able to demonstrate to an employer, and just uh, to uh, go back to Michael's point around the job description. You'll have read the job description. You'll know it inside out. How do you map that to your CV? If you want to be able to show an employer that you know the job. That's the ability part. I, guess, I know I can do the job. I have the skills and I really want the job. That's the, I guess, the motivation part. So, I mean, I mean it, I, for me, that kind of sums it up in a, in a nutshell quite nicely. You know, I know the job, I know I can do the job and I really want the job. So give me the job, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Sean and Michael. So the next question, a lot of participants are inquiring about, can they talk to alumni or student ambassadors? And I can answer my, this question myself. So we have an excellent, Unibody platform, which is very informative, where you can have a chat with our current students and our alumni, ask about the different majors, and um, I have just posted the link, but the website is www.smurfitschool.ie forward slash admissions forward slash chat. Um, so the next question, um, do, does UCD cater for students with learning disabilities? And I can answer this question myself because I was a program manager for many years. So I think in the Smurfit School of Business, we have excellent support services. So we have a disability office. We have an excellent team of very experienced program managers. We have student advisors. We have international liaison officers. So the answer to that question is yes. Um, another question, which is very interesting, uh, several students have inquired, um, can I apply um, for um, majors with a non-business related academic background? Well, we have a wide portfolio of excellent MSE courses. And the good news is that we have around half of our courses where students can apply 
for supply chain management, project management, marketing, uh, with a non- About 80% Carol, isn't it? 80% of the program. 80%. Yeah, yeah. Project management, all these majors you can apply across lots of different sectors and industries. And I think this is very important in the current climate because it means that you can transfer your skills and work in different roles and different industries. Um, so we have a very informative, informative website, uh, the smurfitschool.ie, and we have uh, an excellent admissions team. We receive around 6,000 applications every year coming in from students all around the world. Um, so if you're considering applying to us, I would strongly recommend that you submit your online application as soon as possible because many of our courses are becoming oversubscribed. Um, and if, if you have any specific questions, you are welcome to uh, contact me directly. My email address is carol, with an E, dot deering, with two, D, two E's, at ucd.ie. So let me check now and see if I have any further questions. So a lot of students were inquiring about the advan advantages of pursuing an MBA. So thank you to Sinead. I think you have addressed all their questions. And thank you for your excellent insights to the, the benefits of pursuing the MBA. Um, and then finally, there's a question around, uh, are students assigned mentors to help them prepare for jobs? So Michael, would you like to take that question? So the, there's two opportunities, well, I suppose the main way in terms of preparing for jobs is through the career service itself. So mm -hmm. there are numbers of ways you can engage with us. Uh, be it one-to-one, -one, be it group skills acquisition, be it online learning. Uh, there's many ways to, to reach out to us. Uh, mentoring, then, uh, there is a facility within UCD. Graduate. I think you yeah. might talk about that. Yeah, there's a facility. So there's one-to-one -one mentoring offered on the MBA program. And so, and then also there's a graduate um, platform which is on our website and that shows you the list of all alumni who are interested in being a, a mentor um, and they're from different disciplines and you can go onto that website and you can connect in with somebody on that website so it's graduate and it's on our main uh, UCD Smart website so I'd like to welcome back Geraldine now um, Geraldine I, do you want to say a few words before we leave and I'd like to just thank all the panelists for me um, to wrap up, just to say a huge thank you to our alumni, to Sinead, Rebecca and Sean for being with us here this afternoon and for sharing their experiences with you. Um, the diversity of their backgrounds, uh, the value of studying for a master's and also the value of studying at the UCD Smurfit School in terms of network, in terms of the experiential learning, the support. And I suppose one of the really nice things to hear this afternoon from our alumni is almost a reflection back of who we are at the Smurfit School in the support and the dedication of all of our faculty and staff to our students, leading then to the richness of the careers and the experience that our alumni have spoken to this afternoon. We do look forward to welcoming you to our beautiful campus in September. And for those of you who have not had the opportunity to visit in person, um, I um, invite you to look at a short video um, of our beautiful campus. Um, and that will be posted up um, on the chat. Um, we're sat in, in the beautiful seaside village of Black Rock, which is just 15 minutes from the uh, heart of Dublin City. Um, we do suggest that you get your applications in as soon as possible. Um, and also, if you have any particular questions, Elaine, who you've just met, and Carol, um, in our admissions team, will be able to um, answer your questions. And then just a final note, uh, do stay tuned for the next episode of What It Takes, um, which is happening on the 8th of July, um, and details will be coming up on the chat right now. Um, and that What It Takes is, um, yeah, on the 8th of July, and we very much look forward to welcoming you to the Smurfit School in September. Bye for now.